Welcome to It's the Muppet Show podcast. I'm Heather. I'm Jason. Today we're watching season one, episode nine, with our very special guest star, Charles Aznavour. Voir. Voir. Like <laughs> Voir. So this episode originally aired uh, January 17th, 1977 in New York. So, geez, I think you would have to be a really of a, of a particular age group or very into a certain type of music mm -hmm. to know who this dude is. Yeah, and I definitely didn't. Uh, he was known as uh, the last great troubadour. Like He was that sort of crooner. Uh, I mean, not even like Sinatra. Like He's just this like more old school. And he's French, Rome. too. Yeah, he's Armenian born in France. Okay. His, his folks, he was born in France. Uh, 1924, his parents fled uh, what is now Turkey, uh, what was then Constano Constantinople. Ooh, right. Istanbul was Constantinople. That's, that <laughs> that is such a fun song for um, an Armenian genocide. Ooh. God, that took a turn. <laughs> just, yeah, just yeah. It's, it's a little. Okay. It's a little dark. Right. It was one of the worst genocides prior to World War II happened. Right before World War One, right? Uh, yeah, sorry, went dark. I'll go yeah, dark there. Went but dark anyway, fast. so he, his folks moved to France to uh, because a lot of the Armenian genocide targeted intellectuals, artists, that sort of thing. Kind of the same thing that Stalin did. Sure. Um, and his parents were uh, musicians and artists and uh, intellectuals, so they had to get the f out. Right. Uh, so he was born. He was raised singing in a very you know, cultural, culturally rich uh, environment. Um, he was taken under the wing of Edith Piaf. Uh, he was just kind of singing in little theaters and whatever, and Edith Piaf uh, heard about this guy with this golden voice and took him under her wing. Uh, Edith Piaf was uh, a little bit of a nightmare, but also an incredible artist. Okay. <laughs> she made him get in, like she, kept on him about his nose because people would think he was Jewish. And so he, he had a hard time in, in World War II, going all sorts of dark places. Uh, he had a hard time in World War II because he had a big nose and people just assumed he was Jewish. Uh, his family did help uh, Jewish people escape uh, during that time too. And he's a very, right. very cool guy. Uh, sure. But Edith Piaf was on him about his nose. And so he got a nose job. like. Good God. Way back when. Sure. Uh, and her only comment was, I liked you better before. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I'm going to flip it. Like you said, he flip was... the script. <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of like uh, one of the last... Troubadours. Troubadours of uh, note. Uh, he, he ended up selling uh, between 180 and 200 million records during his lifetime, uh, making him one of the largest selling... Musical artists of all time. Holy cow! Yep. yep. Oh, that's cool. I just got lost in the genocide. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. laughed after that. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone. That's all right. Uh, let's see if I have anything else. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I think it's time to let's let's fire this one up. See what all it's right. about. <laughs> Boom. It's the Muppet Show opening. Love it. Get those high kicks up. Mm -hmm. Sparkly tights. I wonder if it's season two where the where the arches come mm -hmm. in. Uh, we got Fozzie telling a joke here. Let me catch his joke. Here's our first reveal. Mr. Charles and He really works the as nouveau He does. Kermit leans into his French accent. Classic Muppet mobbing. What happens when Gonzo hits it? Clock chimes. Sure. Big Ben chimes hit. After the, uh, the O is struck. Big Ben's chimes come in. So Fozzie peeks his head through the curtain. He's just checking out how the house looks tonight. 
And Kermit is speaking in French. Yeah, and it totally reminds me of the uh, cabaret. Oh, right, the Joel Grey. So, as Kermit notes, you'll notice a little French sneaking into my speech, and that's because of the special guest tonight. And what do we have for the first act here? I feel pretty. Absolutely. We have a, a blue-shaded whatnot Muppet, uh, and she's singing I Feel Pretty as she prepares to go on a date, and the it's the classic physical Muppet gag where she starts removing different pieces of her uh, body. I love the, the removal of the nose changes the voice. Like they do a really good job of adjusting the character voice as it different progresses parts come too. On. Yep. Um, so by the end, she's you know. Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> so uh, I feel pretty. It's a song uh, by Leonard Bernstein and Stephen Sondheim. Uh, it's from West Side Story. And these little girls don't normally have the fangs. It was a very weird little Oh, it is addition. kind of a weird choice. So, yep. And like the, the mouth actually goes in a little crooked because she's just like Oh, yeah, she on. like jams the mouth in. But the then she pieces. when she ducks down to do the like fur chain, she can it's see fixed. that the mouth is fixed. So that took, like that was a longer cut. Yep. Ooh, I like her purple fur now. Mm-hmm. It, I really also like how versatile these the whatnots are. Oh, it's the beautiful day monster oh. is her date. Oh, fantastic. And he, he loves it. When she takes off all her makeup, he's going to see that she looks totally different. Oh, my God. So backstage, uh, <laughs> Gonzo's coming up to Kermit here to find out why he hasn't been performing over the last couple of weeks. Why, why Gonzo hasn't been performing. And Kermit says, I... I've seen you eat a rubber tire to music, and I've seen you play a concert on your own head with a mallet, and uh, it doesn't work for, for Kermit, is what he says. It's not working for him. And Kermit suggests that Gonzo finds a manager to deal with his career. Gonzo reminds me of, uh, I mean, he... That character is the the weirdo performance artist and like having been to art school and lived in like weird places. Um, like I've known Gonzo. Oh god. I've known <laughs> these like, no, this is this is my art. Right, right. I, well that's why we love Gonzo. He yeah. doesn't sacrifice his artistic mor- morals. Yeah, regardless of if it's good or not. <laughs> the backstage is looking clean this week. Someone's been tidying up. It's kind of the further corner of the backstage, too. It's kind of a weird shot. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, we have Kermit introducing uh, the next act, which is our first uh, performance by Mr. Aznavour. Mm-hmm. And we didn't even talk about his actual like recording career. He has, you know decades of soundtrack work he worked in film in like just kind of little knockoff roles uh, but some bigger roles in um, Germany and France and those really kind of classic 70s movies like sure the, the yep. French New Wave and stuff yeah. like that uh, but so. Mildred is a good example of like the type of woman that would really be into this like right, her swooning right. is really on point so yeah we have Charles dancing with Mildred here to the song The Old Fashioned Way and uh, the we've got humanoid Muppets dancing around them they're in this really beautiful ballroom sort of set it looks like the French guy from the Rita Moreno episode probably yeah is back there he danced a lot for them. Right. So, uh, the old-fashioned way is uh, a Charles Aznavour song, actually. Um, the song was released in 1973 um, as a single, um, and it became a became a hit in the Netherlands, Belgium, the U, and the UK. So, uh, oh, and it was on the British charts for. Um, over 15 weeks so Jeez. he was you know people knew who who he was for sure it's just 
nowadays, I don't yeah. think he as a really five year old watching this or, or that, yeah. whatever. Like we had no idea. Right, right. Or three year old, I guess, as the case may be. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Fred Astaire uh, has has a version of this song, as does uh, Petula Clark. Mildred is loving this. Mm -hmm. She can't get enough of the uh, the dancing dancing time here. I mean, it does have a beautiful voice. He does. It's a pretty straight sketch, though. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's just dancing and, uh, of course, his, you know, musical performance. But there's no real, no real gag to speak of. Other In the than end, there is. I mean, oh, I it's I not really like it. a huge, yeah, that move. The ladies push Mildred out of the way. And oh, right, right. He right. just doesn't miss a beat. He just starts singing to them instead. Sure. Those are weird looking. Barbara Walters-esque. <laughs> like he, full humanoid Muppets. Oh, yeah. Mildred is Yeah, no, she's really bummed out. Oh, wait, and he wait, just wait. goes right back to her. Oh, what a charming sweet. smile too, huh? Oh. This is their running gag through it. What that they you love? You didn't order any. Oh, Statler and Waldo, Waldo, Waldorf say that they love French singing and French fries. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But Statler didn't. One of them didn't get the French fries because he didn't order them, and that oh. that comes back later. <laughs> All right, we cut to backstage again, and uh, hey, look, Gonzo has found his manager in the form of Scooter. Uh, Gonzo believes that Scooter actually understands the soul of a true artist. So, uh, and Scooter... But also weirdly understands, like, Gonzo's literal, like, Gonzo takes everything very literally. Right, right. Absolutely. And Gonzo starts smashing his head with a mallet, shouting, Art! So, oh, here we go. It's time for Veterinarian's Hospital. In the beginning of the gag of like always using the laughing gas and so. oh jeez I didn't yeah. even really notice that they're hitting that nitrous pretty yeah. hard. Say huh? turn off the joy juice. The joy juice. Yeah. Good God. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't pick up on that. Ooh, look at that. That's a very bizarre looking Muppet. Uh, just a shaggy blue head and a bright big a orange nose. nose. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and this one, pretty dark, uh, Dr. Bob determines that his patient has died, but not all is lost. Because mm -hmm. his record is still good. <laughs> Saving 9 out of 10, uh, and this patient was number 10. Which I love that. Now number 10 in the medical hit parade with a bullet. Oh my Going god. Going back to the number 10 with a bullet. Oh my god. Classic. I guess that joy juice really dulls his senses. Uh-huh. Good God. They're really laughing it up. It's the joy juice. <laughs> so we're in uh, Mr. Aznavour's uh, dressing room here, and Hilda has brought Charles a meal. Uh, chicken, some salad, and uh, a loaf of French bread, which ha happens to be, uh, yeah, it's alive. Yeah. Because it's, it's just kind of French. regular sandwich loaf, but it's speaking French, which makes it a French bread. And that's the bit. That's the bit. And we're at the dance here. What do we have going here? Classic George. Mm -hmm. His bouncy dance. Excuse me. Mildred asks if you read. He says all the time. She says, do you like Kipling? George says, I've never kippled. Brilliant, brilliant. We got, we got a rat dancing with a banana. I see Rolf in the background. I missed the banana joke there. Oh, the banana shares a few terrible banana puns, mm -hmm. basically. We got Piggy and not Kermit dancing. Couple of freckles back there. What is Rolf dancing one? with? Uh, I think that was a freckle. Oh, and look at this. The tables are going to turn one, two, on three, animal. Dip. One, two, three, dip. 
So Animal's dance partner shows him what it's like to dance with him. And uh, Animal loves it. The, the old one, two, three, dip, one, two, three, dip. Very much He yells more, more. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Hey, we got the UK spot here with the Gogol Gogolala Jubilee Jug Band. Personal favorite. Mm-hmm. Not Rolf. Right, right. I, and like, I mean, I, I like Rolf, just the UK spot usually is Rolf. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um... So they're performing uh, the song, Does Your Chewing Gum Lose Its Flavor on the Bedpost Overnight? What a mouthful. Mm-hmm. Ha. Yeah. Um, that took me a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but again, in the tradition of the Muppets, this is another novelty song. Um, originally uh, performed by Lonnie Donegan, who I have actually heard of. Um <laughs> He released it uh, as a single in 1959, uh, where it hit the UK charts, um, and it peaked at number three. Um, Donegan was like a skiffle performer, which was kind of a UK like uh, folk um, type of music. Okay. And the Beatles were very influenced, and the first kind of in incarnation of the Beatles was as a, a skiffle band. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And Lonnie Donegan, of course, being a UK performer, the song makes perfect sense being in the, in the UK spot. Yeah. I love the jug band. They're in like a stone silo or something. Stone yeah, it's really pretty. Beautiful. All right, so next up we have the talk spot. FaceTime with Kermit. <laughs> And this time, Kermit wants to know why French men are so lucky in love. Because they can wear this outfit and still be okay. Wow, yeah. What does he have going there? I, I like know. that. It's like a minimalistic paisley with a really bold striped wide... A uh, blazer, blazer kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Old collar blazer. Yep. So uh, Charles is going to demonstrate just why French men are so lucky in love uh, by speaking to Miss Piggy... Uh, in French. Here she comes. And Into it. Already. Yeah. And you know, she's a, she likes to think that she speaks yeah. uh, French. Oh, she is just loving it. So what did Charles whisper to uh, Miss Piggy? Your oil filter has a leak and your transmission is sagging. So you can say anything in French and uh, it's going to sound good. <laughs> gonna get the desired results i don't think it was tri again no subtitles when this came out mm -hmm. so his unless she spoke french you would wouldn't really know what he was saying that one was easier like i don't i do not speak french uh, but you could tell he was just rattling off numbers mm -hmm. i know enough right. to recognize that those were numbers <laughs> sure <laughs> and kermit has to apologize at this point for the way piggy was uh acting and uh charles just says i've met the woman of my dreams yeah he falls for his own game oh piggy one man's poison is another man's bacon kermit says and then piggy comes in and karate chops yeah, him right it. in the guts calls him a barbarian oh with the star curb stop oh, curb stop at the end i love yeah, the yeah. french tongue i love pig's Pig tongue. tongue i don't get that i know i didn't order any oh my gosh Okay, so we're uh, backstage again. Going through the wardrobe. Yep. Scooter and Gonzo are raiding, raiding the costume closet. Right. What do we have here? Gonzo uh, uh, doing a female impersonation act. In that classic, like, I would say, like, 50s era, like, bad drag, where you can <laughs> just see it from a mile away. Oh my goodness, you're right. So uh, Kermit allows Gonzo to go through, uh, you know, go with it. Okay, we got a panel discussion here. Not featuring the guest star. Correct. And this time the uh, topic is, what is man's role in the universe? Uh, Sam the Eagle has some pretty strong ideas about it. Uh, we have Mildred... Uh, and Hilda speaking up. 
giving their credentials. Um, Sam thinks it's uh, to be decent and hard work is man's role in the universe. Uh, Mildred does not believe man can roll in the universe. Uh, he's not round enough to roll. And uh, Gonzo just keeps taking everything as literally as possible. Oh my god, that's all right. Keep your head down, work, keep your head down. And Gonzo, of course, ducks. <sighs> Sam's getting pretty frustrated at this point. At the end, uh... Yeah, the whole thing is just about Gonzo misinterpreting things. Yep. Smashes Sam with a gavel here at the end. Because they want to break it down into different pieces. <laughs> Sam called Gonzo a man. What is this man doing? <laughs> it's kind of a longer panel discussion, isn't it? It is, and it's just as chaotic. I mean, they're always chaotic, but... Right. They're definitely dragging they're, it out, though. Yeah, it has a Saturday Night Live skip gone too far feel to it. Oh, the last, like, half an During the last half hour of Saturday Night Live, it really just good. goes astray. You hit three punchlines that failed. Stop it. <laughs> I do like the set polka dotted mm -hmm. desk and the uh, turquoise background. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. Of course, I know you really dig the burgundy. Yeah, uh, suits. burgundy tuxedos. Why not? All right, finally. Good God, we have Mr. Fozzy Bear. Thank you, thank you. Please don't stop, please don't stop. Oh, I love him. Fossey says he can see we're all in a great mood tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, so Fossey says I could bury you guys with one line to Statler and Waldorf. And they want to know what the line is. Uh, but he's not going to tell a joke if they heckle. But if you heckle, look out. That's all I can say. Uh, and Fozzy breaks down that he's learned how to deal with hecklers working in the nightclubs. What was that gorilla joke you just said? The hat check girl was a gorilla? Hmm. Interesting. Oh, and they'll... Okay. Statler and w Waldorf, they love it. They're kind of turning on. Yeah, and then they just took over the whole thing. They just start to... They just start to... Uh... Being the act. Right. Oh, they finally say, hey, we work alone mm -hmm. when Fozzie tries to get in. And they actually buried him. And then they turn on each other. <laughs> they start heckling each other. Oh my god. Hecklers run amok. <laughs> oh. oh. Socked him right Waldorf in the mouth. Like that. So Kermit, we're, we're backstage now, and uh, Kermit is look, was looking for Scooter. He was right behind him. And Scooter has decided not to man manage Gonzo anymore. Because uh, Gonzo ate the contract. Gave him the classic, standard, 50-page managerial content, contract. And Go Gonzo, Gonzo ate, ate it. it. Yep. yep. And then this little, like... Yeah, what do we have feeling? here? The inchworm song, yeah. But look at the set. With some children singing in the background. Right. And a bunch of math, <laughs> <laughs> which I guess explains the children singing. Right. So it's supposed to be a school schoolhouse, presumably. Mm -hmm. In the background, we've got Charles sitting in a field of uh, flowers and um, singing uh, the the song inchworm. Yep. Do you know Inchworm? No, I don't know what that's from. Um, let me tell you. Because cool. <laughs> I didn't know either. Um, Inchworm uh, was a song originally performed by Danny Kaye in the 1952 film uh, Hans Christian Andersen. Interesting, okay. Yep, yep. Um, jeez. I love Danny Kaye. Yeah, I, like, I love me some Danny Kaye too. He's really good. But I haven't heard his version of it. Um, so Charles is petting a tiny little inchworm 
uh, Muppet, kind of like uh, Oscar's Slimer. Yeah, the worm. Yep. Uh, so Inchworm, Inchworm has been recorded by many, many artists. Uh, let's see, Anne Murray, Kenny Loggins, huh. uh, Mary Hopkins, who is a British performer. Uh, Paul McCartney and it's, David Bowie. It's a very loved song for uh, being yeah. just like, I mean, it's a sweet song. It is. But I wonder if all these people grew up with it, with the Danny Kay, and they're like, oh, I need to do that song. Right, right. Um, you know the song Ashes to Ashes by yeah. David Bowie? If you, it has it a lines very, up. A very, the rhythmic pattern and, and uh, I believe... David actually cites this song as being an inspiration for that uh, track. And this song actually shows up again on The Muppet Show. Um, I forget who does it. I know. Oh, maybe even Danny Kay. Oh, sure. He probably does it. <clears throat> He's just really happy with himself. That's like a little bliss, bliss out song. Right. And it was actually a perfect way to... Uh, and the episode. Yeah. Because another half an hour has basically passed us by. Yep. <laughs> All the kids are asleep because that was a good little lullaby. Absolutely. And that jacket? Holy crap. Yeah, wow. Looks like a bad Vegas carpet. Yeah. Oh, and the loaf of French bread shows uh, shows back up because you know what? Now they're friends. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you had somebody to talk to. Classic Muppet mobbing at the end as credits roll. Love it. So, I mean, geez, what did you think? What did you think I liked of this it. It was uh, obviously more about music because he's a troubadour crooner. Right, um, right. So we didn't get the like comedic acting. All the, the songs were pretty straight. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But it was sweet. Like, it was. It, it, was it was all nice. really nice. Yeah. What do we have next? Up next, it's Harvey Corman. Nice. So that's going to be fantastic. But until then, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, for more It's the Muppet Show podcast, you can check us out at it's the Muppet Show podcast.com. You can also listen and watch clips and full episodes with us on YouTube at slash It's the Muppet Show podcast. You can like and subscribe us there if you want. Like and subscribe. You can hear, hear us on all major podcast providers all of them. where we would love it if you would follow along and perhaps rate and review yeah why not give us five stars and let us know what you think fantastic till then see you next time